Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, I began to share something with you yesterday titled Darkness versus the Light. But before going to today's broadcast, can we demand for our daily bread? Join me right now as we demand. Say, Father, I demand right now and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So I was showing you yesterday when Isaiah said, Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness will cover the people. The reason gross darkness is covering the people is because there is the darkness covering the earth. Now why will there be darkness covering the earth? Because there will be no word from God ruling any structure. When I mean structure, now I'm talking about the things that shapen and influences men's belief. The ideas by which things are established would not come from God. Let me give you an example. You remember when suddenly the Torah of Babel, when suddenly people came together and said, hey, let's start building this structure and let us build until we get up to God. And they set their hearts towards it and they went to work and they began to build. And God spoke. I, I would like you to look at those words that God spoke. Genesis chapter 11. Now I want you to look at this. It says, from verse 1, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Sina and they dwelt there. And they said one to another. Now, I want you to see how this thing came about. They said one to another. Praise God. Go to let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had bricks for stone and slime had they for mother. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now look at verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, meaning they had started work which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language, meaning they are saying the same thing. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Did you see that? The power of the mind and the power of agreement. He said, the people is one and they all speak one language. And God himself said, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Now, hey, the thought to build that city didn't come from God. The thought to build that tower didn't come from God. Now, I want you to look at verse 8. Now, God, God confounded their language. They began to speak differently. Now, look at verse 8. So, the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Now, of course, because they stopped building the city, they couldn't build the tower again. Now, you see, the thought to build that city didn't come from God. 
It came from the imagination of their mind. But now, that's how they would have built a city in darkness. And imagine that city not carrying out God's purpose. Imagine everything that will be done in that city will be under gross darkness. Because God never planned for that city to be in that location in the first place. Now the same thing we have in the world today. Many systems that have been established did not come from the thought of God. It didn't come by the wisdom of God. It didn't come as an idea from the Lord. Men imagined to do things. And let me tell you this imagination, most of it came from the devil. Satan puts imagination in the heart of men. Now he, because he knows, he knows that God has plans concerning all those areas. He knows. So what did he do? He goes ahead, and this is what he does. He goes ahead and he begins to spread the darkness. He begins to spread the darkness. So where he perceives God intends to build a city, he knows, he, he knows that God has this kind of city that he would love to build. You remember Abraham. The Bible spoke about Abraham in Hebrews chapter 11. He said, Abraham saw a city with foundation whose builder and maker was God. So there is such a place like that. Now, not just one particular place. There is such a thing of God building cities, setting its foundation and building the cities. Now, this was the same reason God approached Abraham and said, come out of your father's house. There is a land that I'm going to show you. And the land that God took Abraham to, which he said, you will possess this land, is a land that was already occupied by people. And sometimes people have wondered, why didn't God just give Abraham a fresh land? Why must God give Abraham a land that is already occupied? I'll tell you the reason. Because in God's plan, Abraham was supposed to be the one to own that land. But hey, guess what happened? The darkness went ahead. The darkness went ahead. So everything they were doing in that land was in darkness. Every, you remember God spoke to Abraham and said, look, your children are going to be in a foreign land for 400 years and after 400 I will bring them. And God said, the reason is this, the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So everything that they were doing in that land, the Amorites that were doing in that land, they were doing it in darkness. Everything they did, they were doing it in darkness. And that's how the world is today. Many of the things we see around came from the place of the darkness. And because the darkness has covered the earth, people are walking in gross darkness. Now, is God going to abandon the whole earth because of that? No, sir. No, sir. That's the reason he said in Isaiah chapter 60, it's time to arise. It's time to shine. The reason is because your light has come. Now Abraham's light came to him and he brought light. Now look at the nation of Israel. And that's why physically speaking, all the wars that Israel is going through with its neighbors and with the Palestinians, it's difficult to solve that problem. Why is it difficult to solve that problem? The only witness that Israel has that that land belongs to them is God himself. Yeah. And that's why it's only God that can defend them in that land. Oh, the Palestinians and the others come up to say, oh, this land belongs to our forefathers. We have record that our forefathers built this. And they are right. But hey, they built it in darkness. They didn't build it with regard to the one who created the land and had plans for the land. 
So everything their forefathers did on that land was in darkness. And God showed up one day and spoke to Abraham and said, Hey, come, follow me. Your light has come. Now, the whole nation of Israel is proof that God has plans for every one of his child. And he's got land for every one of his child. Now, all that you need today is for your light to come. And what does it mean your light has come? For his word to be spoken into your heart. And that word will begin to lead you. And it will lead you to your own place. It will lead you to your own land. I prophesy into your life right now. You will receive the land that God has apportioned to you. The land that God wrote consigning you in the book of life. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the word of the Lord coming into your heart, you will begin to receive light consigning your own place. You will begin to receive light consigning your own place. And by the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord, your steps shall be ordered to that location. Physical location, I mean. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, I prophesy into your life right now. The place that God has ordained for you to be, for you to walk, for you to, to dwell, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's what God means when he says, your light has come. So, I prophesy that light into your being right now. Receive words from the Lord. Receive inspiration from the Lord. And get up. And begin to walk and live to that place that God has ordained for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your inheritance is being given to you. Beginning from this month. A shifting is taking place. And this shifting shall take place by the light of God. And that's how we dispel darkness from the earth. So you see... Satan has gone forth spreading his darkness everywhere. Now, he is in the business of spreading that darkness. That's what he loves to do. Why is it darkness? Because anything he does, everything Satan does, everything is in darkness, ends in darkness, starts in darkness. There is no light in him. Just like Jesus said concerning him. He said there is no truth in him. Now truth is the same thing as light. And a lie is the same thing as darkness. Because lie, a lie causes darkness. You know what that means? A lie blinds your eyes. Truth opens your eyes. So Jesus said you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Now when you are told a lie and you believe the lie what happens the lie puts you in bondage so that's why a lie can cause darkness and jesus spoke concerning the devil in in john chapter 8 verse 44 ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. It says when he speaks a lie, he is speaking of his own. He is is by, you know, understand what Jesus is saying here. When Satan is speaking a lie, that's his domain. He is speaking his language. The language of Satan is a lie. He speaks lies all the time. That's why you must never believe him. You must never believe him. That's why when Jesus, now I was telling you that yesterday, Jesus, when he told Jesus, if you are the son of God, command this stone to be made bread. Jesus said, no, I have received light concerning this already. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, but he was hungry, yes. But he is not going to accept the suggestion from the devil because he knew Satan was only trying to cause darkness over him. He says, oh, if you bow down to me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. Told him, I will give it to you. 
And Jesus didn't go about arguing. It's not your own. It's my father's own. No. He said, hey, it has been said to me, thou shalt worship the Lord your God and him only you will serve. Light. And that's how you must respond to the devil whenever he comes. Don't respond. Oh, no, I, I refuse. I refuse. What light have you received concerning that thing? If you have not received light concerning that thing, then it is so easy for you to be deceived. If your light has come, it means word from the Lord has come to you. What that means is, God is saying, come out of that darkness. Arise from that darkness. Arise from that darkness. That darkness has conditioned you to think in a certain way. Now, it is this same darkness that have conditioned people to think that without a job, they can never make progress in their life. It's darkness that have caused them to think that way. It is darkness that have caused people to think because you didn't go to school, there is a limit to which your life can be. It is darkness that have taught people that. It is not God. Now I'm not saying school is bad. I'm not saying getting a job is bad. But I'm saying the purpose, the mindset by which these things are driven is darkness. It is darkness that have, the darkness that have caused people to think until you have so much money in your bank account, you cannot be termed successful. It is the darkness that have caused that. So because of that darkness, men are groping in gross darkness. So people want to be, people want to amass a lot of money. Why? So that they will be termed, they will be called successful. And so their eyes are red. They want to do anything to be successful. They want to do anything to get money. They want to increase their bank balance. They want to drive the latest cars. Why? So men will call them successful. Gross darkness. Why did I say gross darkness? The idea of that did not come from the Lord. The idea of that came from the darkness himself, Satan. Why? The only way you can overcome that darkness that is in the world. Oh, The only way you can overcome that gross darkness in your own life. Because I'll tell you the truth. You think you're, you love God, but you don't realize you're still walking in the darkness. The only way you can come out of that gross darkness and come out of the bondage of the darkness is when your light comes. What, I, what do I mean when your light comes? You want to get a job, you wait for the word of God to come to you concerning that job. You want to start a building project, you wait for the word of the Lord to come to you concerning that building project. You want whatever you want to do, you wait. What are you waiting for? You are waiting for light. You are waiting for light. And you hear people, funny enough, you even hear Christians say these things. You hear pastors say these things. There is no way you're going to succeed in business without taking loans. You hear people talk like that. They say that's the purpose of loan. That's the purpose of, they call it other people's money. Now that thought, that idea came from the place of darkness. So when a preacher talks like that, he also in that area, he is in gross darkness. Because see, his ideas of prosperity is based on the darkness that have covered the earth. And now he is, he is coming up with ideas on how to make that darkness in that gross darkness work for him. All is darkness because God have given his word. He told the children of Israel, he said, you shall lend to nations. And you shall not borrow. Now, the one who spoke that, spoke that from this place of wisdom. 
He spoke that from the place of wisdom. Now, every wisdom that comes out of God's mouth comes with grace. Now, many times God's children see the wisdom but they don't allow the grace to rest upon them. So they struggle to keep the wisdom. You cannot keep the wisdom if the grace is not upon you. So God said, Thou shall not bear false witness. He said it. And now you are struggling to keep it and you're not doing well in life. Because many times you have been told you have to falsify figures. You have to do this for it to succeed. And, and other people are doing it and they are making progress in their own way. But you know that progress is in darkness. And you're saying, no, I cannot because God said I, can, I should not do it. But you've not sat down to ask the Lord. Lord, for you to say this thing, then there must be a grace to do it. Where is that grace? Because he never called us to struggle to keep his word. It takes the grace of God resting upon you to keep his word. So it is not his, you see those commands, they are not before you and say, if you break this command, I will deal with you. No, sir. Rather, it is in you and you are living your life and someone say, how come you succeed without bearing false witness? He said, no, I just follow God. Oh, wow, so easy for you. Yeah, because I just follow God. Praise God. <laughs> Woo, my time is up today. Listen, pay attention to these words. And I'm telling you the truth, your life will take a different, completely different turn. And you will begin to walk perfectly in God's light. And you will prosper, you will make progress. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.